everybody, this is Brendan here with Common Motor. It's common-motor.com on the internet. And today we're going to be talking about the Shockwave electronic ignition system. This is our own original design that we've made for the Honda CB350, 360, and 450 series of motorcycles. We're going to show you how to install it, all the details about it, so stay tuned. The Shockwave works with the stock style ignition coils that have a minimum resistance of 3.5 ohms. Coils are very prone failure on these bikes, so swapping out to a new set is a good idea. The common motor part number is 3058. The common motor combo regulator and rectifier part number is 3023, and that needs to be installed on the bike for the warranty of the Shockwave to be valid. The original voltage regulator and rectifier is the most common electrical failure part on these bikes, and faulty systems can send a voltage spike to the shockwave, damaging the sensors and modules. We are going to be installing the shockwave on a 1975 Honda CB360. However, the process is almost identical for the CB350 and CB450 family of bikes. Before we get to installing the shockwave on the bike, there's some initial preparation that needs to be done. After the negative side of the battery is disconnected, Remove the points cover on your bike and the two screws that hold the points plate to the engine. Once that is off, remove the bolt and washer holding the mechanical spark advance mechanism on the end of the camshaft. Then remove the advance mechanism itself. You may also need to gently pry it out if it is stuck. The fuel tank is removed next along with both spark plugs. Moving forward with the disassembly, the points wires are unplugged from the coils, and now the points plate is completely removed from the bike. The wires going to the condensers are also unplugged, and the condensers are removed completely since they no longer need to be used. The key switch bracket and horn are also removed by undoing the two bolts that sandwich them to the frame. The stator cover was removed since we are going to be dealing with ignition timing later on in the process. Some oil will drip out when the cover comes off, so be prepared to catch that. The last bit of prep is cleaning up and lubricating the mechanical spark advance mechanism. It is very important to notate the index mark on the edge of the trigger cam. It is typically a dot or small line that has been punched into the edge. This mark indicates the tallest spot on the cam and will also be used as a reference mark to set the position of the shockwave sensors. The base plate notch is there as a reference when reinstalling the trigger cam to the advance mechanism plate. It's important to note that when you're reassembling the trigger cam on the base plate, that the alignment mark of the trigger cam is on the same half of the assembly as the notch in the base plate. It is possible to install the trigger cam 180 degrees backwards, which would result in not being able to properly set the ignition timing. Different model bikes have different advanced mechanisms, so yours may not look exactly like this, but they are similar in design and the same methodology applies. For cleaning, it is as simple as removing the eclipse, spring, shim washers, weights, and trigger cam from the base plate. Note the placement of the shim washers when disassembling so they are reassembled in the correct positions. Remove any grime, rust, old grease that are all in these parts. And now that everything is clean, you want to make sure it's also lubricated. So white lithium grease is applied on every surface that has moving parts. In the center points cam, make note of the groove that is on the inside. This is a grease reservoir and should have grease applied in there, as well as on the outside feet. Place the cam back on the base plate, making sure to have the alignment mark on the same side as the alignment notch, and finish reassembling the mechanism. Wipe off any excess grease and turn the trigger cam so the weights move outward and then release. The mechanism should move smoothly and freely once reassembled. Place the advanced mechanism back on the engine, setting it on the drive pin, but don't install the bolt and washer just yet. Now, we can start assembling the shockwave. We will begin with putting together the electronic ignition modules and mounting them on the bike. For this example, we will be using the module bracket for the CB360 family of bikes. The CB350 and CB450 assemble in a similar manner, but see the printed diagram in the kit for the exact details. Start with putting some blue Loctite on the bolts, and threading the standoffs onto the large bracket plate. 
Refer to the printed diagram to orient the position of the large bracket plate and see which side of the plate to mount the standoffs onto. With all four standoffs firmly screwed in, the electronic ignition modules can be added in. The green one goes on first and then the blue one. Make sure to slide them on in the orientation that allows the wires to clear the top standoff. The small retaining plate is added on with the remaining four bolts, again using blue Loctite on all of them. To prep the wires, strip off the insulator so that a quarter inch, or six millimeters, of copper is showing. To differentiate between the two white wires of the modules, use a marker to make a reference mark at the end of the white wire of the blue module. Slide the long piece of heat shrink supplied in the kit over all of the wires except for the black ground wires. Secure it in place with a heat gun or a lighter. And now we can start attaching the wire connectors. The factory style bullet connectors can be used on the module wires if you have them. However, we have supplied these easy to use posi lock connectors. The posi locks are extremely secure, easy to install, and also easy to remove if need be. The red posi locks should be installed on the white, blue, and green wires from the electronic modules. The two red wires have a different style posi connector that will be installed later on. The small end of the connector is slid over the wire and then it's simply threaded onto the main body. Make sure to keep some pressure on the wire when threading the posi lock together and that no copper from the wire is visible once the posi lock is in place. If copper is visible, disassemble, trim the wire slightly, and then reassemble. We are now ready to install the bracket assembly on the bike frame. For the CB360, the bracket is bolted to the right side of the frame with the modules facing to the left side attaching to the key switch and horn bracket mounting holes. The bolts are inserted through the horn bracket, module bracket, then through the frame from the left side. This side tab used for a flasher relay on the CB360 key switch bracket needs to be bent up or cut off to clear the module assembly. Once the key switch bracket has been modified, slide both the black ground wires onto one of the mounting bolts and then reinstall the key switch bracket and bolt it back into place. The process for the CB350 and CB450 is almost identical, however the module bracket is bolted to the right side of the ignition coil bracket and sandwiched with the horn bracket. Both black ground wires are attached to one of the mounting bolts and the key switch bracket is added back on the left side and then bolted in place. For all model bikes, route the module wires up and back along the frame to the ignition coils. The last piece of the kit is the sensor plate assembly, so let's look at that. Each sensor fits into a groove that is machined in the mounting plate and is marked accordingly. The sensor for the left cylinder, the blue sensor, can move back and forth in the groove in order to set the proper distance between the sensor face and the tallest spot on the trigger cam. The groove for the sensor used on the right cylinder is wider than the left and has two smaller and deeper grooves, or gutters, in each side of where the right cylinder sensor, the green sensor, will sit. The green sensor can move back and forth as well as side to side in its groove. The side to side motion is there to allow the ignition timing to be set spot on for the right cylinder. The two additional gutter grooves are designed to allow you to insert the tip of a feeler gauge to move the green sensor left and right to a specific distance, while keeping the sensor itself square in the mounting groove. And if feeler gauges are not used to keep the sensor square in the groove, the sensor can cock left to right in the groove and cause issues when setting the timing and ultimately affect how the engine runs. The mechanical advance mechanism spins counterclockwise when the engine is running. So because of that, the sensors are directional in how they are mounted. The faces of each sensor have an arrow that indicates the direction of rotation of the trigger cam, as well as clockwise and counterclockwise markings. The sensors need to be installed with the arrows facing the counterclockwise rotation. The arrows will match the arrow engraved in the sensor plate. For now, the sensors are bolted into place in the plate temporarily, but you do want to make sure that the blue is on the left side and that green is on the right, just like the modules that are on the bike. The wires are positioned as to exit the points chamber as if they are on the bike. For the CB350 and CB360 families of bikes, the wires exit to the right side of the chamber. For the CB450 families of bikes, the wires wrap around the bottom of the sensor plate and exit out the back side of the points chamber. But if you are unsure about the exit wire routing, refer to the original wires that connected the points to the ignition coils. Take the small piece of heat shrink and cut that in half. Slide one piece over the sensor wires close to the sensors, and then slide the piece of woven thermal sleeve over the sensor wires as well. Tuck the thermal sleeve halfway inside the heat shrink and heat it to secure it in place. Be careful when positioning the heat shrink on the wires. 
The arrow shows how the wire exits back of the sensor and smoothly curves into the heat shrink. Leave enough slack in the wire so they are not being pulled sharply from the rear of each sensor. It is best to error on the looser side. Place the remaining piece of heat shrink on the other end of the thermal sleeve and shrink that in place as well. And now, the sensor plate can be loosely bolted into the point's cavity. Be sure to align the notch in the outer perimeter of the sensor plate to the matching notch located in the point's cavity. This will be the baseline position of where the ignition timing will be set. Each family of bike has the notch in a slightly different location in the point's cavity. The bolts that hold the plate in place are threaded in, but are not tightened down just yet. And now, we can start the wiring process. To start, the red power wires from the modules are tapped into the black and white 12 volt positive wire from the bike's main harness using the blue posi tap connectors. Install the taps on the black and white wire first, and then connect the red wires to each posi tap. This wire also provides the power to the ignition coils and is tied to the kill switch. See the enclosed wiring diagram for more information about how to install the posi tap connectors. The white wires from the modules connect to the blue and or yellow wires of the ignition coils. However, first the double female bullet connectors need to be snipped off if you plan on using the red posi lock connectors. But after cutting and stripping both wires from each coil, the white wires from the modules are attached to these corresponding coil wires. This is where the mark on the white wire from earlier becomes really helpful. Connect the blue module to the left side coil and the green module to the right side coil using the posi lock connectors. After that, connect the sensor wires to the module wires the same way, blue to blue and green to green. Now, the wiring is fully complete. But if this did seem a little fast, don't worry. The kit includes a really simple to follow color-coded wiring diagram that should make this whole step a breeze. Now it's on to setting the ignition timing. With the negative side of the battery reconnected, we can start adjusting the sensors on the plate. To start, the engine should be rotated so that the index mark on the trigger cam is aligned on center with the left sensor. The bolt is then taken out and blue Loctite is added onto the threads. You do have about a 20 minute working time before that fully sets up. The bolt is then loosely threaded back on. You now want to slide the sensor all the way over to the cam, but with a 10 thou or 0.3 millimeter feeler gauge in between the sensor and the cam. Now, go ahead and tighten the bolt down fully. With the power turned on, you want to check and see if the timing is correct. Rotating the engine only counterclockwise, the blue LED should turn off as soon as the LF mark on the rotor lines up with the index mark on the stator during the compression stroke. But if it is a little off, that is okay. Just rotate the sensor plate and check again until it's timed perfectly. Rotating the sensor plate clockwise is advancing the timing and counterclockwise is retarding it. Once it is timed perfectly for that side, Tighten the sensor plate bolts down securely since no further adjustment is needed with the plate. The power can now be turned off for now while we're setting up the right sensor. With the blue Loctite added to the sensor mount screw as well, we can set the 10 thou gap between the sensor and trigger cam, again with the index mark on the trigger cam lined up with the sensor. Before tightening it down fully, you also want to set an 8 thou or 0.2 millimeter gap between the left side of the sensor and the left edge of the gutter groove for the sensor. Now the bolts can be tightened down and checked for proper timing. The power is turned back on and rotating the engine only counterclockwise. The green LED should turn off as soon as the F mark on the rotor lines up with the index mark on the stator during the compression stroke. But if the LED turns off before the F mark reaches the index, the sensor needs to have a larger left side gap than the initial 8 thou. And if the LED turns off after the F mark reaches the index, the sensor needs to have a smaller left side gap than the initial 8 thou. Loosen the bolt and adjust the sensor as needed, but make sure to keep the 10 thou gap between the cam and the sensor. It also is a good habit to turn off the power on the bike when you are adjusting the sensor. And if you need more detailed instructions on how to set the timing of the shockwave system, you can watch the detailed tutorial video linked below. Once the timing is rechecked and correct, you are good to go. Reinstall the bolt and washer to hold the mechanical advance unit to the camshaft bolt and tighten that down. The stator cover can be reinstalled as well as the spark plugs, wires, and fuel tank. All right, we're gonna fire the bike up. There, fuel's on, choke, key on, power, power of sensors. 
Fire it up. And if you are satisfied with how the bike is running, you may reinstall the points cover, taking care not to pinch the sensor wires when putting it back on. This concludes the basic installation of the Shockwave electronic ignition system on your vintage Honda. For technical support and help with your Shockwave system, please email Common Motor directly via the website. For advanced users, the Shockwave can be dynamically timed using a strobe-style automotive timing light. Each sensor should be checked individually. As a note, each tick mark on the outer perimeter of the sensor plate is approximately 5 degrees of crankshaft rotation. This will aid in knowing how much to move the sensor plate to bring the ignition timing into spec. Alright y'all, so we had the bike put together, taken it on a couple of test runs, brought the engine up to redline, everything seems to be running and working great on it. So as far as we're concerned, this ignition system is set. So this concludes the installation instructions for the Shockwave ignition system on this particular CB360. Again, similar for the 450 and 350 variants of bikes. Uh, thanks for joining us and thanks for your support on this project. It's been a long time in the works. Uh, if not, go ahead and make sure, if you haven't done it already, I should say, uh, make sure you subscribe to our newsletter on our website, uh, check out our YouTube channel, and also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We'll see you next time.